ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Atheists, Godless Iowan, and Aaron Ra refuted. This video will be rebuttal commentary to an interview Godless Iowan did with Aaron Ra on July 2nd, 2018. Yeah, and, and they have no real arguments that they can actually present in a, a logical and rational manner. Um, yeah. I mean, you've had some recent discussions uh, with like Kent Hovind and uh, George Lujak, ugh. But <laughs> I guess, like like the guy Lujak, for example, you know, I didn't vet him myself. And somebody asked me, would I come on their podcast and talk to this guy? Okay, fine, I'll do that. I didn't know that they got somebody who had absolutely no idea what he's talking about about anything ever. He had you know? less of an idea about his own stance than he did about <laughs> evolution or anything along those lines. He was amazing. Aaron Ra, referring to me as amazing, is about the only thing he said right during this interview. He didn't vet me, is what he is Monday morning quarterback whining about. This only shows that Ra didn't come prepared to debate me. Was Ra seeking weaker opponents? When I come to a debate, I am ready. Aaron Ra could have easily vetted me by going to my website, scripturetruthministries.com, or by reading my book, Mysteries of the Scriptures Revealed. Instead, he didn't prepare for the debate and was steamrolled by yours truly and the truth. Then, in frustration, he pulled a Roberto Duran, no mas, and quit by exiting the debate. Along with myself, Julie Boric is the co-founder of Scripture Truth Ministries. Hello, Julie. Hello, George. I'd like to comment on a few of the ridiculous quotes from the debate. Aaron Ra stated, George Lujak has absolutely no idea what he is talking about, about anything ever. Godless Iowan then chimed in saying he had less of an idea of his own stance than he did about evolution or anything along those lines. Well, I'm happy to be here to bear witness that George Lujak absolutely knows his stances quite well, and he is the greatest, most knowledgeable minister during these end times in which we are now facing. One thing George Lujak has convinced me of is that verifiable science absolutely does not contradict scripture, and that Darwinian evolution is not verifiable science. Many atheists have become disillusioned with organized religion, as I did. I am also known as the Catholic Runaway, and you can check out my YouTube channel, thecatholicrunaway.com. I have carefully studied scripture and the writings of George Lujak, and I recommend you get his book, Mysteries of the Scriptures Revealed. Yeah. Oh. Uh, when he said that he thought that microevolution, micro am I, right? He thought that microevolution is when you stick your head in a vat of water and you grow gills. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Congratulations. You are the dumbest motherfucker I've ever talked to. <laughs> Did I, George Lujak, say that microevolution is when you stick your head in a bucket of water and grow gills? Okay, I know you, Aaron Ra, cannot possibly be that dumb, that utterly stupid, and I know that you are speaking to your dumbed-down audience, hoping to pull a wool over their eyes. Let's go to the videotape. Okay. Ask me the question. You don't like the answer. I can't help you. Wrong. George, wrong. that's good. I don't think so. But there okay, are limits to wrong. it, okay? There it are limits. Okay. I can George, flap my arms. George. Hold on, I'm not Dave, done answering Dave's the question. Mute. I'm not done answering. Oh, you don't want to hear my answer. Okay, just I mean, go ahead. Is... Go ahead. Go ahead. But, okay. but just... I, there are limits it's to that point. evolution. I can go and flap my arms all day long, and I'm never going to sprout wings and fly away. I can spend my life submerged in water, and I will never grow gills behind my ears like Kevin Costner did in Waterworld. 
That's not evolution. That's science fiction. Okay. So now I have a wait, wait, wait. Important... Can I ask uh, something on, real quick? So do you literally yeah, believe yeah, making... in water? Hold on, hold on. Let me let me ask this real quick. Do you literally believe in the movie Waterworld that Kevin Costner stuck his head in water and grew gills? No, no of course he doesn't believe that. I don't no, believe hold I'm on. Let him answer. I don't. No, no. I'm, I'm saying in the movie. Do you think that that's how Kevin Costner got his gills? He was a mutant. He became a mutant. He was born. Whatever. They didn't say how okay. he got them. He just just. That didn't answer right. my question. All right. All right. That didn't answer my right, question. Cool. Hold on. Did, hold on. Do you hold think on. that he stuck his head in water and grew gills? No. No, it's that's not what he's saying. Guys, movie. guys, we're getting, we're getting way off track and I'm getting tired. No, 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 this is exactly on track, Dr. Kyle, Dr. because that's exactly what he said that happens. It's exactly what he said that happens. He thinks I'm that if he sticks his head underwater, he can grow gills. Okay. I'm saying the movie. No, like as far as evolution goes. Okay, I got it. 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 This is not in question. The movie. Okay. So, Aaron Ra. I have just exposed you as the disingenuous, misinforming, lying atheist that you are. Let me further elaborate. Sticking your head in a bucket of water and or a human being such as Kevin Costner in Waterworld being born with gills is not my explanation of microevolution. I refuted the idea that this type of evolution promoted by Darwinian evolutionists, could happen. I never referred to it as microevolution, and I dubbed it science fiction. Gills. Punctuated equilibrium in evolutionist circles is the faith explanation given to account for the lack of transitional fossils found in the fossil record. While punctuated equilibrium may not be the faith that Aaron Ra, godless Iowan, or the staff at non sequitur hold, it is the atheistic faith of one of the branches, denominations, or sects of the atheist faith. It is not my explanation of microevolution. Punctuated equilibrium, meaning, definition, explanation. Punctuated equilibrium, the hypothesis that evolutionary development is marked by isolated episodes of rapid speciation between long periods of little or no change. Julie, your thoughts? Wow. What a twisting of what you actually said, George. I had the same initial reaction you did. Either these people are intentionally misrepresenting what you said, or they weren't listening. I know that atheists are indeed fools, and now I can see that some of them may be liars as well. <laughs> I don't know if you saw his return against King Crocoduck, um, but he at one point said, well, yeah, I can see that mutations could be beneficial, but I don't see that we have mutations in humans because what did the human turn into? Again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my debate against King Crocoduck, I and the truth were once again triumphant. I previously viewed and analyzed King Crocoduck's debates against young earth creationist Ken Hovind. I saw what King Crocoduck was able to do to Hovind, and I would say that it can be argued he won the debate against Hovind. It is not that atheism won versus creation, but that Crocoduck outwitted Hovind because Hovind is a young earth creationist and must defend young earth creationism using young earth creationists made up junk science. King Crocoduck effectively kept Hovind on the defense for most of the debates, rightly proclaiming billions of years ago distant starlight visible on earth, and Hovind 
ineffectively refuted King Crocoduck's scientific arguments. As an old Earth creationist who believes that the Earth and universe are billions of years old, according to both science and scripture, King Crocoduck could find no Achilles heel with me to exploit in my debate with him, and I had him on defense for most of the debate. Godless Iowan and Aaron Ra, again, I reiterate that I do not believe that you can possibly be this stupid. So I again accuse you of misrepresenting my position to your dumbed down, misinformed audience. The beneficial mutations I acknowledged are actually a misnomer. I acknowledge that there are genetic variations within genes. When I said, what did the humans become who had beneficial mutations or was born with a beneficial genetic trait, I was projecting to where you and evolutionists say where we came from and some to where we are going. In other words, Darwinian evolutionists proclaim that due to beneficial mutations, humans evolved from single-celled organisms and are still evolving. I say BS on that. Kinds are limited to genetic variation within kinds, and genetic variations within kinds has its limitations. We never see, and the fossil record never records, one kind of creature transitioning into another kind of creature due to genetic variation within the kind. George, I came away from your debate with King Crocoduck laughing that he actually begged people to send him money at the end of the debate. Why would I ever consider donating to his cause so that he can continue to lead his generation to follow him in darkness, sin, and death? No, sir. I will continue to support George Lujak, Minister of Scripture Truth and Verifiable Science, which lead to understanding and eternal life. And you have to figure out everything again. Um, it's, it's like everything that you've been told up to this point could be a lie, and you have to figure out where the lies are and where the lies aren't. And most people do go on a search for knowledge, a search for truth, and... Uh, not everyone is, becomes an atheist, uh, but I think a lot of a lot of my friends who are in the atheist community um, would would say the same thing that when they left the church, they went on a search and found answers, easy answers that they had been had hidden from them for years. It's an important thing to point out that I mean I was watching one of uh, one of your other videos where you were talking to uh, or <laughs> you weren't talking to somebody it was some uh, some Muslim making a broadcast and you were making comments on it. Yes. Yeah, and uh, the thing that annoyed me about that guy is you know his he was talking about how scientists now claim that they can explain life without God. Everything we explain is without God. Yeah. No one can explain anything with God. God is not an explanation. Because it's magic, that's why is not an explanation of anything. You know, the, the, the logical fallacies of the circular argument and the special pleading, God can do whatever he wants, God can break the laws of the universe, God can, you, they're empty assertions. Yeah. And the biggest problem that I have in trying to explain anything to religious people is to try to get them to understand that you can't just state facts that are not facts. If you say it's a fact, but it's not a fact, that's a lie. Yeah. So baseless speculation asserted as though it were fact is dishonest. You have to have evidence to back the position. You have to be able to show that it is correct before you can say that it is. You know, the truth is what the facts are. So, you know, your facts are, are, are objectively verifiable. And if it's not objectively ver verifiable, then it's not a fact. And then likewise, you know, I know that I know that I know there's a God. No, you don't know no, shit. You don't know anything. <laughs> un until you can demonstrate it, because knowledge differs from mere belief. And I know that everybody that's familiar with me has heard me say this a billion times. Or like every interview I say this. But I mean, 
Knowledge is demonstrable with measurable accuracy. If you can't verify the accuracy of your claims to any degree at all, by any means whatsoever, then where the fuck do you get off saying that you know it? You don't know it. No. You're just asserting it. And that doesn't mean anything because you get all these different people from all these different religions who all assert that theirs is the absolute truth and the revealed word of the one true God. Logically, only one of them can be right. And the probability is that they're all wrong. Yeah. But yeah. if any of them, any of them says that they have the truth and they can't show the truth of it, meaning the objectively verifiable facts, then none of them have the truth. Godless Iwin and Aaron Ra claim to be on a search for knowledge and truth, but in their quest, they begin their journey with a logical fallacy. There is no God. Thus they proclaim, here is the easy road, a godless creation, and here is the scientific method, the Big Bang, to cosmic order, to abiogenesis, to Darwinian evolution. These are easy, but unscientific, godless faith-based answers. God does require believers in him to have reasoned faith. Another logical fallacy Aaron Ra asserts is that there are many denominations of Christianity and only one can be right or they are all wrong. Then he presumes atheism, a faith also, is true by default. This is the same logical fallacy that the Catholic Church uses when they proclaim that they are the one true church. And if the one true church is not the Catholic Church, then which church is? This is like asking a man, when was the last time you beat your wife to a man who has never harmed his wife? Julie? George, it's a tragedy that so many people after discovering incongruities within their own church, have accepted the deceptive arguments of anti-God people who claim that the Jewish Messiah was a fairy tale character and that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was a cruel, evil murderer. It's so convenient for these people to accept atheism and throw out God. How I wish that I had studied the scriptures thoroughly early on in my life rather than wasting time and money involving my family in churches. I could have simply presented them with your comprehensive book, Mysteries of the Scriptures Revealed, and they would have had the truth and understanding from the start. It, it seems like we live in bizarro America. <laughs> it's what, what it really seems like right now. Um, and I know that, that uh, there's been bad times in our past, but you really thought that as we, once we got out of the Bush time period, that things were going to turn around. We were going to start embracing science. We were going to start actually working towards healthcare. And when I thought that Bernie was going <sighs> to win the nomination, I was so charged, energetic. I felt so powerful because we were finally, finally going to start fixing the things that were so long overdue to be fixed. And instead, we went screaming in the other direction, on fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It like I said, I, I can't watch the news anymore because the second I do, um, I just get angry. The first words out of any newscasters when they say Donald Trump did this, I know it's something dumb. I there, there's <laughs> never been a single smart thing that he has done since. Have he's you been... ever talked to a Trump supporter? Isn't it amazing? Oh. Where the where the hell do you get your graphs and 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 what program do you use to turn them upside down so that they look the way you think they do? Oh, they are anti-Trump, Bernie Sanders, socialist Democrats. What a surprise. These are the easily duped types who believe whatever the mainstream media feeds them, as well as what the public education evolution establishment 
has already fed them. No wonder they display a lack of critical thinking ability. Listen up, atheists. God never asked anyone to obey him through the teachings of a particular church denomination, many of which misrepresent some or most of God's word. God desires his followers to search for him and find out the truth about him through the holy scriptures and believe in him through reasoned faith. Yeshua, Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 13 through 14, that the road is narrow that leads to eternal life and not many find it. Scripture Truth Ministries can guide you to that narrow road, or you can choose to remain on the atheist road of despair and hopelessness that leads to death. Julie, I'll let you have the closing comments. I have some advice for R and Ra, Godless Iwin, and all their atheist followers. Don't waste any more of your time on earth in vain trying to disprove God. Seek your creator who made all things and who is soon about to make his presence very well known. Come out of your death cult and visit our website, scripturetruthministries.com. I guarantee you will be amazed and blessed. Hey, Mr. Atheist, what's going on? Hey, stupid God believer, you're stupid. Gee, you sure are grumpy, and you sound just like Patrick from SpongeBob. Whatever. So, Mr. Atheist, I'd like to know what you think about the supernatural. <laughs> there's no such thing as the supernatural. Just like there's no such thing as God. Just like there's no such thing as the flying spaghetti monster. Oh, I see. Well, let me ask you this. Do you believe in the principle of cause and effect? You mean the rule that says something cannot come from nothing? And every effect must have a cause? Yeah, of course, you moron. And that's why I don't believe in your stupid God. Because your God would totally break that rule, idiot. How about the Big Bang Theory? You agree with that? <laughs> Duh, of course. That's how the universe started. A big explosion of matter and energy. It wasn't some supernatural force, creationist moron. Okay, Mr. Atheist. If you agree that something can't come from nothing, then who or what caused the Big Bang? In other words, where did the original matter and energy come from that started the Big Bang? You idiot! The universe is a constant. It's just always been there. Well, if you're right, that means the universe defies the law of cause and effect, doesn't it? And that would make the existence of our universe supernatural. Which means we both believe in a supernatural cause for our existence. Well, uh... You idiot! The universe just kind of started on its own. The Big Bang was how the universe created itself. Uh, how would the universe create itself? That would also break the law of cause and effect. You just said that was a big reason you don't believe in God. So then, shouldn't you stop believing in our universe? Well, uh... Haven't you heard of virtual particles? Scientists have found particles that might come into existence from literally nothing. So maybe something can come from nothing. Well, if you're right, doesn't that make God scientifically possible? Well, uh... Uh, well, I've heard some really smart atheists talk about other dimensions of time, or an eternally oscillating universe. Stuff like that might explain a universe without a first cause. Wow. Well, can those things be observed scientifically? Uh, no. Isn't that one of your biggest complaints about God? Uh, yeah. Never mind. I've decided I don't totally agree with the law of cause and effect, okay? Okay. That means you can no longer use that law to argue against God. <laughs>